Hey folks, it is old Dr. Warren here, ready for another episode of the show. It has been a while since I've been out there. I've been here, there, everywhere, as you guys know. I, I disappeared for a little bit, off on adventures. So, a lot to talk about. we got to catch up on digestion. I've been promising you a digestion show for a little bit. Also, you may see and hear that there's much better sound quality. Well, that's because I've garnered some friends in the radio world, and they're starting to educate me on what to do, how to get better sound, and whatnot. So I got this little rig on my head. I'm hoping that it will produce better sound for us and, well, give you a better show experience. So that's all that for now. The other thing I did, did some turkey hunting, was not successful. Tried to you know, go get some good free range, 100% organic, all that good stuff, but nah, just didn't happen this time. Also tried to take a video, but I'm not so good with <laughs> the video stuff. So I may upload that to the to the um, Instagram. See, I can't even think about these things. Uh, Instagram for you to see my lack of technical prowess and have a good laugh there. So other than that, let's get into the other bit of digestion. So long ago, we were talking about digestion, how it starts in the mouth, right? We were going to mix the salivary amylase, which is the enzyme that breaks down sugar. Because remember, anybody that ends in ACE is oftentimes an ACE at breaking down stuff. Most of the time, there are enzymes that do not end in ACE. But just an easy rule is that the ends in an ACE. More than likely, it's an enzyme. So, we've already done that whole process with the preparation of the digestion process. So that had to start with seeing the food, smelling the food, knowing that it's coming, that starts the production of digestive juices both in the mouth and the GI, right? So we ate it, it went down, now we're about to go into the stomach. We enter the stomach. So the whole warming up of the digestive process was ultra important. Why? Because it is now that the stomach has been prepared for the incoming food. It got a little bit of a, a heads up before the food came in. Because why? It has to produce hydrochloric acid and, which is so important here, intrinsic factor. We do not talk about intrinsic factor enough. Now, intrinsic factor is, well, intrinsic to the entire body. Yeah, I had to make a bad joke, sorry. I can't help myself. But here's why. When you do not have enough intrinsic factor, which is what we are told happens with age, just normally your, your intrinsic factor goes down. No, that's because of malnutrition. And before I get off on this, let's talk about the intrinsic factor. What is intrinsic factor? Intrinsic factor is just like the little um, grabber game in the arcade, if everybody remembers that. Okay, we're kind of dating ourselves way back in the day when there were arcade games where you had the little joystick and, and the little deal goes down and grabs a bear, picks it up, drops it. That's what that is. That's what intrinsic factor is. It is the little claw that's going to go out into your food and grab the B vitamin, specifically B12. If you do not have enough B12 in your system, your neurology breaks down. You will also have difficulty with your blood. So, if you don't have a nervous system or your blood is not doing so well, you are going to have major problems with the entirety of your body. It is the same as, let's say, having an electrical problem in your car. Not something you want. It's going to be madness. So it's very important that we have enough intrinsic factor. And we're going to get to all that. How do we produce all these enzymes and whatnot? Well, that comes through nutrition. But we got to get through the digestive process first, how it works. So you have the intrinsic factor, a couple of other enzymes that are produced in the stomach, and the hydrochloric acid. Really, for this, intrinsic factor and hydrochloric acid are the two most important things. If you don't have the intrinsic factor, what happens? Your blood and your nervous system goes down. If you don't have the hydrochloric acid, here's where everything else goes down. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, the food does not get softened enough. It doesn't get beat up, if you will, really, really well tenderized and broken down very well where that the enzymes can move in and work with ease. 
that's why it's so important to chew your food, if not over chew. Everybody says 20, 25 times. I've even heard, you know, hit the food 30 times with your, with your teeth, you know, something. I mean, I think 30 is a bit much, but try, try to get to 20. I, I mean, I don't think you can over chew, but got to be realistic. Who wants to sit there and chew each time 30 times? I don't think that a lot of people have that kind of time. So try to go for at least 20 because that makes sure it's mechanically soft and softened. I'm sorry. And then after that, we're able to ensure that the hydrochloric acid that you do produce, most of us are a little low on that, is able to break down that food and soften it further for the other enzymes to actually start pulling the nutrition out of the food which is going to happen later. So what happens when you don't have enough hydrochloric acid? Well, the food doesn't get broken down. The food doesn't get broken down. You put more strain on the pancreas. You put more strain on the pancreas after a while, it just goes, ah, I give up. I can't keep up. You burn it out. Then when that happens, you have so much food moving in to the stomach system, the intestinal system that has not been properly broken down what does it do? It just rots. It breaks down. Depending on what we're eating, if you are ingesting processed things such as a lot of flours and pastas and things of this nature, which are which have been refined and made super, 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 super processed, white and refined, there's nothing there to help it leave the system. There's no fiber. And what happens is that this stuff starts to combine with the intestinal mucus. Over time, it turns your intestinal mucus to concrete. And, well, it's difficult for the vacuum nozzles, which lie inside your stomach system or the intestinal tract, to pull the nutrients in to your bloodstream. So you create your own... Malnutrition. We create our own malnutrition by neglecting the very, very, very most important part of our digestion, which is hydrochloric acid. Now, let's close this by talking about how you get more hydrochloric acid. You're going to get more of that through calcium. Not all calciums are produced the same. Be absolutely careful with calcium because if you take exogenous calcium, just calcium from the outside, you can increase your risk of cancers and all kinds of other stuff by 40% or more. Very, 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 very bad stuff. Calcium is a complex element. We have to make sure that it is coming in with all of its helpers. That is the problem when you're looking at doing what's called um, fractionated nutrition, just taking individual things without making sure that all of its helpers are there. All of its helpers are gonna consist of the 77 essential minerals and they must be in a certain form for everything to go properly a form that's recognized by your body the best is going to be a colloid a chelate is nice because it has the proper team jersey on but not as good as a colloid so we can get into all of that stuff later but let's make sure that we have enough calcium in our diets a lot of that's going to come from your vegetables also that's why the crock pot or a slow cooker of some sort is so important because you break down that food very well. And if you're using bone broth, you make your own bone broth, a bone make your stock from a bone broth, you're enriching it with a lot of minerals then, and also calcium, so that you can get that in your body. So, I know we've been at it for a little bit. I have not presented anything in quite a while, so here I am. That was our show on digestion. So. In summary, calcium is that which is going to give you hydrochloric acid. It causes the cells in the stomach to go and squirt out the hydrochloric acid. Make sure that you're getting this stuff in your diet. Global Healing Center. Yeah, I mean, Global Healing Center has an amazing one that I, I really prefer theirs probably over everybody's. And let me just throw this out there too. With calcium... Probably your best form, probably, in my opinion, is going to be the calcium orotate. Now, cal calcium orotate was discovered by Dr. Hans Napier uh, 
way back in the day, back there in the 40s. And he was a leading scientist that discovered that, hey, this orotate thing is a great carrier, probably the best carrier out of all the other ones out there to get stuff into the body. There are many orotates. You can get zinc orate, a lot of these things. But calcium orotate is very good along with the MSM. And you can get that at Global Healing Center. Love them. And well, you know, I always end this. Whatever you do, make sure you talk to your doctor and uh, before, <laughs> talk to your doctor before attempting anything that you hear on here because if you kill yourself, I do not want you to send your ghost to follow me. So that is all for now. And until next time, eat responsibly because, well, food's dangerous. That's what we're talking about all the time. See ya.